What's up, everybody? Jason here for JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. 2022 Panini Prism Baseball 12 box case break pickings number one. And again, guys, all card chip. All card chip. Uh, we had a little team random filler or a little pack filler to sell the last eight teams out. So if you have a character sign at the end of your name, Yeah, Matthew, can, well, have fun, first of all. And second of all, yes. I mean, I'm pretty sure you're, you should be prepared, right? I mean, it's okay, though. There's, there's ways to ball on a budget going to Disneyland. Cause, you know, Disneyland is so expensive at some, uh, already. But, uh, yeah, if you if you, if you could splurge a little bit <laughs> on Disneyland food, their food is amazing. Um, I would suggest getting that Genie Pass, too, so you don't have to wait in line too long. That's like the new Fast Pass. You kind of pay for it now. Um, I haven't been there, actually, like, since the pandemic, really. But uh, my cousins that have annual passes go there all the time. But um, I'm going, actually, to Disneyland, I think, uh, October 16th or 17th, one of those days, on a Sunday. But, um, yeah, no, it's, it's, are you going to both parks? Are you doing, like, a, are you doing a park hopper? Are you doing, you know, just California Adventures or Disneyland? I would say get there probably early if you can. Earlier the better. Obviously, go on all the Star Wars land attractions. You know, the Galaxy's Edge, I should say. Um, try to get to the Cantina, which is pretty cool. Obviously, you gotta go on uh, the, the Ride of the Resistance one. What is it called again? I forget what it's called. Something like that. That part's of it. And then California Adventures, of course. Nice. I build a, I haven't built a lightsaber, but um, I I built a little droid. I built a little droid uh, the first first time it opened. I think I went like second or third week. Really awesome though, man. It's, it is really cool. And then obviously California Adventures. You know, obviously they, they have Avengers Land now, which is pretty cool. Just so have Cars Land over there. They have like a you know. Coco, like, area over there, like, you know, more those kind of deal for this month of October. I want to say both parks kind of close a little early, though, right? For that Halloween trick-or-treating night, but... I personally, I mean, I'm a big guy, right? I mean, I love food anyways, but... The food at Disneyland is really good, actually. I love the chimichangas, or... Their, uh... Their clam chowder bread bowls. Delicious. And obviously in California Adventures they have more food options. Foody stuff like that. And then try some blue milk in Galaxy's Edge. I was actually, we, we usually go every year to uh, Universal Studios Horror Nights, but we're going to end up skipping out this year. Um... But Horror Nights is really nice. I've never been to Magic Mountain Fright Fest. But Horror Nights is pretty nice. It's just... Lines are so long, so you got to do front of the line, even though it's much more pricier. It's just so much more worth it if you want to go through all the mazes. If not, you're going to have to get there a little early and try to go as early as possible to get through most of the mazes. Because lines do get pretty crazy. Yeah, man, have fun. It should be fun. Like I said, I haven't been in a little bit, but I used to have a season pass for like five or six years. And then being a breaker, you know, working at night was kind of killer. So I could only go on certain days, especially for the whole type of day. So I ended up canceling it. Just randomly going whenever me and my wife wanted to go. Oh, well, your three-year-old is going to love it, first of all. <laughs> She's going to want to go back. Or he's going to want to go back, whatever, vice versa. Um, but, uh, you'll have some fun. You and the wife will have some fun. Tyler Beatty. To start us off there for the Giants. That is Jan. So, again, guys, the red and the blues are, are just normal, common colors. So... Probably not going to penny sleeve top of those unless they're bigger rookies. Eli White for Texas debut. Texas Rangers going to Patrick Davis. 
Yeah, when I go, I only got a day one. I'm, I'm just going to go to California Adventures. My older sister hadn't been there in a long time, and she just wants to drink and, like, go on some attractions, so. We're just like, all right, we'll just go there. And then another time, I'll probably go during, like, Christmas time, if anything, to, like, to Disneyland. We got Joe Ryan. Yeah, what is it? Uh, Soren, California. Do they still have that there? I'm pretty sure they do. And then AJ Alexi. JD Martinez. Yeah, I think they have a new, like, Avengers Land, like, ride now, too. Like, like a Spider-Man one, I want to say. Garrett Cole. Cars Land one, too, is really nice. The Radiator Springs one. It actually goes pretty fast. More than normal. Like, you know, for a ride. You get to go into, like, one of the cars and explore Radiator Springs. And at the end, you race against the other car next to you. Which is pretty cool. A little showtime there for Richard. But yeah, California Adventures has actually gotten really good. Adding more lands and adding just more attractions and then, you know. They're kind of like the place to go. For. I think adults kind of like it more over there. Uh, more than they do Disneyland. I mean, obviously now with Star Wars Edition, they, you know, that's gotten a lot more popular. But I still think a lot of the adults like to go to California Adventures. Because, you know, I don't forget if they still have this all the time. But certain parts of the year, they would like have these little like small like little posts in, around the parks. And then it'd be like different foods from different parts of the world. And then, you know, they'll have, like, festivals for, like, you know, wine and stuff like that. So, kind of more for, like, more the adults in that sense. They do not. They, the haunted, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, what is it called? They turn that into, um, they turn that into, um, Guardians of the Galaxy instead now. They still have the... Haunted Mansion, if that's the one you're talking about, Terry and Disneyland, but the other one, the, the one I used to just drop, like you were on a, <clears throat> in California Adventure, but then they turned it into, uh, sorry, they turned it into uh, the Gardens of the Galaxy. Yes, yeah, so you'll have a bunch of Halloween festivities there, Matthew, and um, uh, I, I want to say that it's probably both parks, but I know California Adventures will close early. I think they close like at six because then they have this like uh disneyland like kind of trick-or-treating where i mean it's for adults too if you want to go but mainly for the kids where they give out candy for the kids and all the kids go dressed up so that's like a separate ticket so yeah it'll be even more halloween themed at night yeah they'll drop it yeah they turned it into gardens of the galaxy one i haven't actually personally been on that one but they turned it into like Guardians of the Galaxy. Woo! There you go. Yeah, you have more than enough time. I was going to say, yeah, like, if you want to try to experience everything, you definitely want to go multiple days if you can. But, yeah, if you got three nights, you're good. Are you staying at one of, like, the hotels nearby? Like, one of the Disneyland hotels? I actually always wanted to stay at one of those. I know a lot of my friends and family members that go to Disneyland all the time. I think at one of the hotels, you can go to, like, one of their, like, b breakfast buffets. And then a lot of the characters, a lot of the characters go meet, meet you as you're eating, which I think a lot of people like. I forget what that's called. But I did hear, though, that obviously they're transforming, they're transforming, uh, obviously, you know, getting uh, downtown Disney a lot better, but I guess they're bringing a Portos. Obviously, people from Southern California recognize that, but Portos is coming to downtown Disney, which it's been pretty fire. There is already one that they built a few years back in Buena Park, but you know, for a portal to be in downtown Disney, that's pretty wild. Riley Adams. I don't know when that's going to take place, but I did hear they announced that a few weeks back that they were going to open up a portals in downtown Disney. No, if you have time, Matthew, you, you know, Bunnell Park is not too far. It's not too far from Disneyland. But, yeah, Portos is, uh, 
very nice like uh, Cuban bakery, but they have the like those paparellos. You can call it, I think they call them potato balls, but basically you can have them with cheese or with gar- uh, ground beef in it, and it's like I don't know, it's just delicious. It's like mashed potato kind of uh, like texture around it, and then inside's the meat. But they have one of those in Buena Park near um, nearby um, Knott's Berry Farm. So. That's really close if you ever wanted to try that out, like Southern California. People love that stuff. I mean, they're obviously their Cuban bakery, or sorry, their yeah, the Cuban bakery is good and all that, but their foodie items are amazing. Yes, I did hear they are making adult Happy Meals, which I don't know if if it's gonna convince me to buy one. Whoa! How about this? How about a little trout. Lava flow. Very nice. And that is going to Richard and the Angels. Well, what are they giving out? Adult toys in there or what? That's not... I mean, what's going to make me want to buy it? <laughs> Connor Wong... That is 5 out of 25 for Boston. That's Jeffrey. Mookie, <laughs> Mookie Betts. <laughs> Terry got me. Terry got me. <laughs> They're just toy kids. They're just bigger? Why the hell do I want that for? We have... Matt, was it for bigger hands? What a joke. Matt Brash. McDonald's is just trying too hard, honestly. No problem, Rick. Congrats, buddy. So we got a tiger stripe there. And all these autographs so far. So it looks like we got an extra autograph in every box again, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Actually, this one has three, seven. So this one actually had one less, but... Still on par, but it did have two case hits. Had a little tiger stripe and a lava flow. I think they're case hits. I want to say lava flows are one per case. I assume. I think the color blasts are, must be much more rare then. Um, they are, but they just don't sell for as much. They they will still still sell for more than than a base. Don't get me wrong, but these prism boxes this year are like. 160 70 bucks I want to say so there's really not too many cards that really are gonna bring back a big return don't get me wrong I mean if you could sell one of those for like 10 15 dollars I mean shit that's pretty good you know obviously for the box price but yeah we have prism hobby box for 140 so for 140 I think that's what drives it down you know so not to say that they, they don't sell well I mean you're not going to see the eye-popping number silvers like you would a football or a basketball silver. But, like I said, if it sells for like $10, $15, that's a pretty good return for like a bit, like a silver, you know. Because these boxes only cost like $140, $150. But, I just assume that the colors, obviously the insert, short prints, you know. Don't be surprised if that trout's only like a $100 or $200 insert. I mean, it's probably worth more. But, you know, don't be surprised because obviously that, that pays for the whole box, you know. Where, like, if you had to buy a prison football box or a prison basketball box, you know, those boxes alone are, like, a thousand bucks. So, if those sell for, like, a thousand, then it basically pays for the box. So, it's the same thing here, you know. So, it's, like, I think a lot of people kind of bash on this a lot, like, the baseball products of Panini. But, at the same time, you know, it's just, the, the, the return isn't crazy. But, at the same time, the price for per box is not also crazy. Yeah, and I would definitely grade it too, Terry. That's something that you would grade and just hold on to in a little bit. You know, this would be his, you know, first rookie prism, technically, right? So, or his only rookie prism, I'd say, but first, obviously, first time in the, as a rookie here, so. But yeah, you know, this is what I tell people. Don't expect, like, NBA or NFL returns for some of these cards, but at the same time, the box is, like, you know, 90% cheaper. Basketball hobbies, I think, are like a thousand, right? Football is probably even worth more.
Mark McGuire. Twenty ninety-nine. Jared Wall uh, Brandon Marsh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, there are rumors obviously Fanatics may be purchasing tops in the future. I mean, if that's the case, yeah. If this was officially licensed, just remember that though. If this was officially licensed, these prison boxes would probably be 500 plus. You know, at least. If not, it's it's on par, like, you know, pretty close to what they charge for basketball and f uh, football. But because it's not, that's why it's so much cheaper. You got to read Detmers for the Angels. Nice break for the Angels so far. Mike Bauman, and if you guys notice, Prism baseball, baseball in general for like, you know, baseball in general for any uh, Prism pr or Panini products, if you notice, like, this is so much more loaded than any other Prism product that you see. And that's because, obviously, they, they want people to, to, to buy their products, and obviously, like I said, they have more money to work with when it comes to Prism baseball rather than, like, football or basketball because they have to pay the huge license fee, you know, so... If you notice, there's a lot more cooler inserts and all that good stuff with this this year rather than, you know, let's say football and, and basketball, which I think is totally worth it. Bobby Wood Jr. This is a great product to just have as a collection, build some sets. And hey, if you can make some money, you know, why not? Spencer Strider for Atlanta. Jeff Minton. Yeah, that's the one thing. I mean, we'll, I, I, I wonder how much products will go up in price and if people would even want to buy it. You know, people would even want to buy it at that price point because it's officially licensed. Torkel's in blue. Cal Raleigh hit a walk-off home run yesterday, right? Seattle in the playoffs. For the first time since 2001. Where's Chad at? He sent me a photo of his screenshot of his phone. It was literally like saying high blood pressure. Or it was saying like your heart rate's too high right now. <laughs> Aaron Nola. And then I had to spoil it for him because as he sent me that, I sent him a, a, a screenshot of UCLA beating his Washington Huskies. And <laughs> it was just like, way to rain on my parade. <laughs> But they actually almost came back, but UCLA just was far too ahead. I feel like DTR is like a seventh year senior with the UCLA Bruins team. It's like a kind of un unfair advantage. He got that extra year of eligibility because of the pandemic, so he used it. He didn't end up going out in the draft last year. So he's like his like on the fifth or sixth year already. Dude, it's been a while. 2001? Like, can you believe that? That's like the longest playoff draw for any sport now. I think Browns were like the next highest, but obviously when Baker Mayfield took another playoffs a couple years ago, that, that ended that drought. But that is crazy. Next one. But yeah, Terry saying we had the discussion today. Verlander, the next 300 game winner. How, how far is the how far is the Verlander? That dude's been playing forever too. Yeah, that was Ichiro's rookie year technically. He's at two something. I mean, you have to assume if you average maybe 15 wins a season, he's gonna have to play maybe what another four or five years, maybe. If he's at two something, let's see. 
243, okay. So right now he's currently 39. I feel like pitchers, though, it doesn't matter what age you are, right? I mean, he's at 243, 133. He's not in any way slowing down, is he? So if that's the case, let's say he picks up another win or two. Let's say he gets to 245. He'd have to average like 15 wins a year to even get close enough, right? So he'd probably get there in like three seasons maybe. Well, Otani was still going to be an angel next year. All, if they didn't give him that $30 million contract uh, arbitration, I mean, they avoided arbitration is all they did. So, basically, they agreed, right? You know, so he's going to come back and he's going to pay $30 million, which is like the highest anyone's ever been paid to avoid arbitration. Like, it's crazy, first of all. But he will be unrestricted next year, meaning that... He has full control of his of, of his uh of his uh you know potential landing spot. So I mean he's gonna get paid so much money. I was gonna say, isn't Julio like at, at 18 wins? We have a Cooper Criswell. And that's four or five. How about that? Angels having a monster break. Jake Cousins is 75. No. At least not this offseason they would have. Because securing him for one more year gives him the leverage to potentially maybe trade. But, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, who knows? Depending on if R. Moreno's out as a, as a as a owner. I mean, who knows? Maybe the new owner just pays him a gazillion dollars and then keeps him there. He doesn't get traded at all. Logan Webb. Kyle Lewis. Domingo Acevedo for Oakland. Didn't... Well, I know Disney owned the Ducks. They never owned the Angels back in the day, did they? I mean, either way, Armorano's going to make so much money. I think he bought them for, like, nothing. I think he literally bought the Angels for, like, nothing. And it was, like, right after they won that World Series, too, wasn't it? Alright, let's check and see what his redemption is. I mean, he may have made him nothing, but he got a huge, like, contract with Fox, I remember. He got paid so much money. And, I mean, just now, just the popularity of them having, you know, Trout for so long and, and Otani. I mean, they just, they're worth so much more now than when he bought him. That's the crazy thing. 
Yeah, just imagine if you would have like actually won some World Series in between. Rookie autographs. Card number 29. Wander Franco. Going to Tampa Bay Rays. That's Chad Wright. B. Well, if he ever does it, then I would sell this right away. Let somebody else deal with it. Right? I mean, if you would have if you would have taken this like you know to the national, if it's been a while, they were giving out some loaded ass like one on one boxes at the national. I'll take one of those instead. All right, here we go. Next one. This is one of those Carolina Blues. Is this going to be one of those hot boxes? Yeah, let's see if we're going to have one of those Carolina Blue hot boxes. Jake Latz to 25. Jose Ramirez. Morgan. Got a Mackenzie Gore. We have Zach Reeks. Casey Mize. Omar Navarez. And we got Illumination Blue. Luke Williams. Fearless Francisco Lindor. Mitch Hanniger. Burger. Jeremy Pena. There's a nice Julio. Blue. Yeah, it's pretty much just what it's been like. And Steven Ridings. Jay Glatz. Judge Blue. And we got a Emmanuel Rivera to draft print right there. Kansas City. Um, we can't really penny sleeve all those Carolina Blues, Chad, because those are like just in every case. So I'm just trying to do some of them that might be a little bit more valuable, because honestly, a lot of these probably won't even sell for more than a dollar. So I'm just pulling out the numbered cards. 
And I'm probably still top of the penny sleeve in some of these blue illuminations, even though they're not numbered. But a lot of these are just not numbered. So don't think that, like, you know, I'm missing numbered cards because, I mean, I'm just, we're just kind of going through it because they're not really going to be worth too much. But those Carolina Blues, those are just like normal base. I probably won't sell for too much. And then the blues and reds are common colors in this. Those are not numbered either. So, of course, if we pull like a Julio, a Wander Blue, something like that, then we'll definitely penny sleeve it to be top loaded. But everything else just unfortunately will not be top loaded. The sleeve and the top loader sometimes are actually worth more than that. So we kind of, kind of, kind of try to do what's worth, what's worthy of it. Well, that's the one thing about one person running it, Rex. I love group break checklists because, you know, they, they set it sorted out by team and stuff like that. I mean, although Beckett actually does a good job too, but I mean, if he doesn't do it, then yeah, you know, doesn't do it. Where obviously Beckett, Carver, Connection are much more official. So again, all of these here, these are all just base reds. So just kind of, kind of blow by them, just because, like I said, they're not really, not really crazy high in value. They're all going to be worth probably less than fifty cents to a dollar, which is crazy, but it will be. We got a birthday coming up on the twenty-third. Bobby Witt Jr. How about that? I got, uh, Kansas City. It's going to Chris Parent. CJ Abrams again, just a red not numbered. Deichman, same thing. I think the only couple players we were told to top load in Pennysley would be Wander, Julio, and like Bobby Witt. And I'll probably Randy or Rosarania. Three of ten, fireworks, gold. Yo Young Park to 75. Got with Merrifield. We got a Packy Naughton to 99. There is a Wander Franco, so again, not numbered, but because it is Wander Franco, we'll sleeve it up to top load. And we got a Omar Navarez. Fearless Silver is really pop, I must say. I'm not even supposed to penny sleeve that, but that looks so cool. Yeah, and that's inserts, numbered cards, all that good stuff. Measure for 140? I mean, that's the price we have it at, of course. <laughs> I don't know what other places have it at. Mitch Hanniger, 14 of 50 for Seattle. Sebastian Rivero for Kansas City. The Yachty Blue, Fearless. Alright, so officially now the first six boxes done. Let's go with the next six.
Fernando Tatis Jr. for the Padres. Tonight, uh, two 100s are. CJ Abrams. Romney Gonzalez to 149. Julio! That's a red. So I'm not numbered, but because it's Julio, we'll sleeve it up there. Zach Gallon to one ninety nine Verdugo. And for the Reds, that is uh, number to 149, Bill. Alec Mano. Anderson. And how about O'Neal Cruz auto? Very nice. So this inner this this case has been pretty fire. O'Neal Cruz a Wander Franco redemption autograph. And we still, like I said, still have about another five boxes to go. We got a lava flow. Pretty solid. And we've still been averaging about four autos a box, so even better. We got Aaron Ashby, Austin Riley, Bryson Stott for Philadelphia. Of course, you can have a break without a Whit Merrifield. Madison Bumgarner. Is it brand new? Anthony Rendon. We got Lou Bob, number to 
Okay, Salvador Perez. Jorge Polanco. Zach Short. Rookie autographs there for Detroit. Detroit's Michael P. And Romney Gonzalez for the Chicago White Sox. Going to Nestor. That's number to 25. I have four boxes remaining. Let me quickly just top load all these autographs. Actually, I didn't realize this. We pulled a Bobby Witt, O'Neill Cruz, and Wander Franco in this case so far, right? Um, I don't think I've hit a Dodgers autograph yet, but you might be getting some color and inserts for sure. So far, at least, we still have four boxes left. Okay. So these ones here are all. Let me see. I should uh, take out the non-autos. Keep those separate. Okay. Okay, so these are like all the non autos but inserts here. For bigger colors and players. And the rest right here, of course, are all colors, numbered cards. Alright, let's continue on. He has been signing the last couple Panini products, Rex. Um, the Eagles should, but again, I'm not, I'm not too confident and not too cocky about it, Diego. Eagles, I think, do have the better team, but you said Jaguars are not the same team as they were last year. So, we'll see how it goes. The Eagles will be down to Vontae Maddox, who probably would have been covering Christian Kirk, who's had a great start to his Jaguars career. Remember, everybody thought paying all that money for Christian Kirk was a waste of money, but Christian Kirk was good. And now with that new offense of Dougie P., Trevor Lawrence excelling in that offense. Jaguars are a pretty good team, offensively and defensively. So the Eagles should be able to win. But I won't be shocked if they lost. J.D. Martinez, 23-50. Well, a little Ken Griffey Jr. silver. Not supposed to top the little pennies to do that, but I'll do that for that. It's a nice card. Jose Altuve, champion stage. Auto.
Verdugo Blue. We got Tyler Beatty for San Francisco. We got Max Scherzer. There's Wander Franco. And how about a gold? Gold! Ryan Feltner. That is numbered 1 of 10. That is for the Colorado Rockies. Going to David Chan. Wander Franco Red. Burger. Joe Ryan. You Darvish. AJ Alexi. Yeah, but I think Judge might be in all those bigger inserts, so that's all you really need, anyways. May Fortes. Josh Donaldson. Oh, shit, I forgot. Well, I have Hulu. I, for I forgot today's the first day of SNL. Kendrick Lamar's the musical guest. I guess I could still record it. I'll record it after this break. But I'll just rewatch it on Hulu tomorrow. Miles Teller. It's hosting, I think. Alright, we got a Xander Bogarts. To 99. But all is cool. Probably Ostromsky. Jose Ramirez. Nice. Yeah, I remember it well. I don't. It wasn't a rookie, was it? I mean, a lot of his other stuff has gone up, but, um, but um, I know his rookie stuff has gone up a lot. Like I'm talking a lot of money though. His rookie stuff has exploded.
And we got a Cody Poteet. Debut signatures for Miami. No, I mean, I have YouTube TV and I also have Hulu. So, I mean, I can always watch it later anyways. Julio Rodriguez, but I totally forgot to click the record. Well, actually, you know what? I think it might have already recorded for me on, on uh, YouTube TV. Once I already decide to do it once, it'll do it for all, all the time. Suzuki. Silver. We got a Steven Kwan. Jake McCarthy. <laughs> Rodolfo Castro. I do have Peacock as well, and I actually pay for the five dollar subscription a month. <laughs> Bryce Elder. I did it as well just because I was watching uh, McGruber there, but I was also wanted to watch some of the soccer that's going to come out on there too. All right, two more. Good. I hope he never leaves. I don't think he will either. Unless there's bad blood in the future, but I don't think so. I know, no new bars here so far. Oh, my jaw hurts. Eloy. Siri. Cal Rally. Spencer Strider. Yeah, well, when is that ever going to happen? Because isn't that dude almost pushing 80?
Spencer Strider for Atlanta. You got Glenn Otto to 100. You got Reed Detmers. And we got Connor Siebold. That's for Boston. I think the man loves that job too much. He's never going to retire. He's probably going to die before he does. He probably loves having the control. Even though the writers, obviously. I mean, writers do a lot, but still. Alright, guys. Last one. All right, here we go. Cal Rally. So remember, guys, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Joe's going to be the same way, and I'm sure Chris was too. But, yeah, guys, you know, obviously, like I said, a lot of these cards, you know, like I said, especially the blues and the reds, some of the silvers that are even rookies, obviously, we're not going to be sleeving up, top loading, you know, because, like I said, it's, it's a... Uh, Kind of have to uh, hold back on some of these season toppers, such as supplies are, you know, obviously pretty expensive nowadays. But like I said, we'll be sleeping and top loading, of course, the numbered cards, the the autographs, the bigger inserts, of course, like lavas and stuff like that. But the majority of the blues and reds, unless they're like a Wander Franco or Julio Rodriguez, stuff like that, even some of the base, they might only just be sleeved up. So that's why I'm sleeving them. Uh, so just remember that, guys. A lot of these cards, unfortunately, like I said, it's a great buy, though. Don't get me wrong. But, um, like I said, a lot of them won't be worth too much. The Kiel Badu. Um, this is on all card ships. So, customers will get every single card. In the future, when we have, like, maybe uh, not all card ship breaks, then these will probably be in charity boxes. But, it would just be, obviously, the veteran base. Every color in that would still ship. All right, Kyle Muller. We have a Hyo Young Park to fifty. Ryan De La Cruz, Bryson Stott. 
We got the La Cruz Auto. Rosny Contreras. We got a Sandy Alcantara. 99. And there you go, folks. So I'll quickly do a quick little autograph recap. I'm just going to show you the cards. Maybe say the team name. Just not go through every, every single one of them. Let me just talk about these really quick. Well, we were averaging about four autos a box, guys, which is great. You know? So more than what Panini boxes they deliver, right? It says we on three on average. We're getting about four on average. So that's even better. Better bang for your buck. And we'd still manage, guys. And that's the one thing, guys. You know, if this was a, an officially licensed product, most likely we don't get a Wander, a Bobby Witt, and a Spencer Torgerson, potentially, you know, whatever the case may be. All the big rookies that we got here in the same case. We probably only get one of those, maybe. But obviously this being a, you know, just player's unit, not officially licensed, can definitely load it up a little bit more as they do with all Panini baseball products. So again, these are all base cards that will either be top-loaded. The majority of them will be top-loaded. Some of these may stay sleeved, but all the numbered ones definitely be top-loaded. Like I said, a lot of numbered cards, a lot of colors, of course. So there you go. Quick little recap right there. So this is coming with the Carolina Blues there, there too as well. Like I said, unfortunately, we can't, can't pay to top-load all of them, but... Everything will ship, so if you want to top load them yourself, you can later. And then here were some of the bigger color cards per se. Like I said, these are not numbered, but obviously bigger rookie like Wander Franco. Got a little giraffe, Amanda Rivera. Of course, this was one of those lava flows as a case hit. We got also a Tiger Stripe case hit. Cooper Criswell out of five. Julio Blue. We got uh, Randy Rosarena Gold. A little Wander there, Julio. And then Mitch Hanniger. And then, of course, we've got all these autos here. So this one for San Francisco. we got a gold for Colorado. Ryan Feltner to 10. Joe Ryan for the Minnesota Twins. Texas, Asia Alexi. Detroit, Matt Manning. Poteet, Miami. Stephen Kwan, Cleveland. Rodolfo Castro, Pittsburgh. Seattle, Calrele. Spencer Strider, Atlanta. Detmers, Los Angeles Angels. Seabold for the Boston. Atlanta, Calabola again. Honeywell Park. Hoyt. Young Park, sorry, for Pittsburgh. The La Cruz for Miami. Another Contreras there. There's Bobby Witt Jr. Jake Cousins for Milwaukee. Angel Acevedo. There's a Wander Franco redemption. Tyler Beatty. Yeah, Eli White for Texas. Minnesota Joe Ryan. Elijah Gillespie for Texas. Tampa Bay Shane Baz. Riley Adams, Washington. Connor Wong for Boston. Reed Demers, LA again. Mike Baumann for Baltimore. Spencer Strider for Atlanta Silver. Autograph. We got Cal Riley again. Omar. Navarez. Steven Stridings, Romney Gonzalez Blue, so, uh, Tony, Santillan, Jake Lotz, Carolina Blue Auto. There's a Young Park again, Sebastian Rivero, O'Neill Cruz. We got a Bryson Stott, Whit Merrifield, Zach Short, and a Romney Gonzalez. So a lot of autographs right there, guys. Appreciate it. This is Pikachu number one of Prism Baseball. Number two is in the store, jazbeescasebreaks.com.